Hello, my friends. It's been a while. Um, it's your friend Eric back with a new episode of the Onwards Portal podcast. That's right. We changed it. And I want this episode to be very focused on this idea of change and why change is such an important thing uh, that we should embrace. Where to even begin, man? It's been it's been almost 10 months since I recorded a podcast. And I guess just I'll set the stage with like why I took such a long break. So where to even begin? I guess I could start by saying I wasn't feeling super fulfilled with a lot of things. I was in a job I wasn't too psyched about that was sucking the creative life force out of me. Uh, I was doing graphic design for other people, and there was, like, very little room left for me to be creative. Uh, Where I was with Onwards, it was, like, one foot on the gas, one foot on the brake. Because this whole idea of Onwards, like, it started back in 2016. Now, I was a year out of high school. I was a year into embracing art and graphic design. And Onwards just was one of the first things I came up with. You know, if you've been following the journey for a while, you remember the bicycle logo. You remember Onwards with the bike. And that's kind of where it started and where it was going. It was a creative outlet for me. I knew I always wanted to make clothing and merch. And like, here, I finally have this thing where I can do that. But of course, if you're someone like me who's on the spiritual journey, not even on the spiritual journey, just life in general, we change and we grow and we evolve and we stop doing certain things and we embrace new things. And I was at this point where it was like, okay, I have this thing I created so early on in my journey onwards with the bike logo. Okay. We'll just, we'll label it onwards with the bike logo. And here we are in 2021 and it's completely different. I'm completely different. What I want to do is completely different. It's much bigger than just making merch. Um, That's why I started the podcast and it was like this weird, like, not really sure which direction I want to go because I have this thing that was created in a place of separation, right? I was very early on my spiritual journey. I was very new to art. I have this thing where the main logo is like this very simplistic thing. Me as an artist, as a creative, I've grown in my creative journey. I've learned new skills. I've gotten much better. And here I have this representation, The we'll just call it the bike logo, this 2D thing that is very simplistic. It's not really unique. Um, you know, a bicycle is a bicycle. And uh, I knew I wanted something more, but it's like, how do I start over or walk away from something I've put so many years into, right? And that's what I was struggling with for for so long. It's like, I have this thing that was created when I was here, but now I'm here and I still have this kind of thing that I've put in so much time and energy and blood, sweat and tears and money into. So let's just keep rolling with it. I wasn't really feeling the bike logo. I wanted something new, but it's what I had. So it was like this weird... Hopefully you're starting to get and understand like why I was feeling the way I was. And so what I decided to do, which is something that I've done for many years now, is I went on a little psychedelic journey. I checked in with my good old friend, Ellis, Ellis D. (laughs) And uh, I've always been the person who's used psychedelics as a tool to just step outside of my everyday life, my problems, my successes, my ego, because that's the thing about psychedelics is your ego gets dissolved for, you know, a few hours and your heart opens up and you're able to see a lot of these things and situations in your life from a higher perspective. And that's what I decided to do this time around, to just reflect and get some clarity and insight on like the direction I want to go moving forward with onwards. And I got to tell you, it was a long, long trip, but it was exactly what I needed. And Basically, it was just me coming to terms and accepting and embracing that it's okay to change. It's okay to take this thing that I've, excuse me, that I've taken so many years and uh, that I've put so many years into and knock that whole tower down, right? That Like the tower card in tarot. The tower card represents like destruction, death, or really not death, but destruction, so you can rebuild, 
right? The tower needs to be knocked over so you can build a new foundation. And honestly, I'll get into this a little later in the episode, but uh, this whole idea of like the tower card and that energy of like destruction and rebirth is happening like all over the world right now. Uh, sitting here, it's March 1st, 2022. Uh, it's been a lot of crazy stuff going on in the last two weeks, but nonetheless, that's the realization I had was I need to knock this tower down and start over. And what does that look like? Well, I need to stop making, I need to stop recording podcasts. I need to stop creating Instagram content. I need to basically just step away go back to the drawing board and start to replan and restructure where I want to go. I need to rebrand everything. I need to come up with a new logo, which by the way, if you're watching the YouTube video, video version, I'm wearing the new logo on my shirt. I've got the flag behind me, Onwards Portal, back of my shirt. It's pretty dope. Here's the new website, new rebrand. So I knew that I had a lot to do, right? And that took months and months because the thing with the creative process is you can't force it. You can't rush art. It has to unfold. And that's with everything in life. Everything has to unfold in its divine order, right? The universe has a plan for all of us. So I just trusted. And I got to be honest, I did really enjoy the time I spent away from like social media and like this pressure because I'm a one man army as of today. And uh, it's a lot from time to time, but I definitely felt the pressure like, oh man, you got to be posting, you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to be creating for Instagram. And it's like, dude, Instagram, like these, it's not even real. That's one of the things I realized on my trip was like, none of this is even real. And it doesn't really matter all that much. What matters is like the value you're putting out there um, and making sure you're creating uh, because you want to create and it, and it's fulfilling. So, and I wasn't feeling that way. So I was like, I need to take a step back and figure everything out. And here we are. <laughs> Like 10 months later, I'm finally recording the first podcast since then. Obviously, I'm in a new space. I'm now in my studio space. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I created this whole space. And one of the things I wanted to do down here is record these podcasts. Uh, and it feels really good. I got some new equipment. I got, um, I'm, I'm, I'm running it through a new um, software, OBS software. I have a stream deck like to make the whole thing easier. Because the way it was before, it just it wasn't super easy and blah, blah, blah. blah. Anyway. The point is, my friends, is that it's okay to let go, and it's okay to start over, and that's something that I battled with for many months, and it kind of put me in this weird headspace, but God, I got to say, like, it's so freeing when you finally just say, okay, I'm going to let go, and I'm going to trust, and I'm, I'm, we're going to start over, and that, like, you free up so much energy when you do that. And so that's what I want to talk about with this whole episode is like the importance of change and why it should be embraced more and how I did it. And that's literally what you're witnessing right here and now in this present moment. So if you're here with me now, I just want to say I appreciate you being here. And uh, I missed having these uh, conversations. Um, I understand that my voice is a uh, powerful tool in which I can express myself and share ideas. And that's the whole concept now with the podcast. It's a, it's a portal into these new ideas and maybe different different uh, different ways of living and being and higher knowledge, esoteric knowledge. Uh, it's a portal. Conversations are a portal. Knowledge is a portal. Portal is like a doorway, a gateway into something new. So the idea is like through these podcasts and conversations, the listeners and even me by expressing and talking, it's like we're all moving through this portal together. Um, so it's, it's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, man, the, the, the LSD trip was really powerful and it's what I really needed and the realizations that came from it um, was it's the exact medicine I needed. Um, change, man, it's powerful. And uh, it feels really, really good. Uh, I'm not going to completely kill off the bicycle logo. I feel as though that's the founding of, and it's funny, you know, full circle. The bicycle, and if you're familiar with LSD and psychedelics, Albert Hoffman, the gentleman who the chemist who synthesized LSD in 1942 on you know uh, bicycle day that's like what inspired the original logo was m because psychedelics at that stage of my life had like completely changed who I was in the complete direction of my life and I wanted to pay homage to that um, so that's where I came up with the bicycle logo there's also that quote by Albert Einstein that life's like riding a bicycle the only way to keep your balance is to keep moving so I had those two things and that's what was the original concept but 
it's just interesting that like that's you know the LSD experiences are where that logo came from bicycle day if you're not sure or familiar bicycle day Albert Hoffman synthesized LSD and you know in 1942 nobody knew what it was and he got it all over his hands and it absorbed through his skin and then he's riding his bicycle home and he's having this crazy fantastical psychedelic trip while riding his bike home and you know he reported it was like the most frightening and yet incredible experience of his life and that's bicycle day that's April 19th 1942 and uh so obviously onwards from the jump was inspired by these LSD experiences that I have had. And it's just f- ironic full circle where it was like it was an LSD trip that let me feel okay with putting a bullet in <laughs> whatever that onwards bicycle logo stage was. So it's just it's just interesting, right? The universe is magic in that way. But there's this idea, right? Metamorphosis. And I have if you're watching, I have this sketchbook from when I was in college. Shout out to Lisa Steinberg, my professor. Um, I'll hold it in front of the camera. Hold on. So I this the whole project was based on metamorphosis. And this is like a vision board, a concept board for my inspiration. I have a bunch of images and colors and quotes. Um, and there's like a short poem here I want to read from this project. First off, metamorphosis means a change of the form or nature of a person or thing into a completely different one by natural or supernatural means. Quote here, what if that change you're avoiding is the one that gives you wings? Mm. The poem I want to read, because this is actually true and this is very interesting. I don't know if you'd consider this a poem. It's kind of just like an infographic, but it's very interesting. And this idea of metamorphosis and like the butterfly can never... uh, come come about if the caterpillar doesn't basically die. So it says here, on the journey between caterpillar to butterfly, the caterpillar encloses itself into a cocoon. Within that cocoon, the entire caterpillar is broken down into a soup-like mixture. Just about all of the major structures are broken down and then rebuilt, including the heart. Soon the butterfly emerges. Hardly a trace of the caterpillar remains. The butterfly becomes free to fly. Personal transformation is much the same. Tired of just eating, working, existing, we go within and close off somewhat from the outside world. We re-examine all of our beliefs, what we were told, what we learned. The process takes much longer than a few days, but sooner or later we rebuild We replace false beliefs held in our minds with truths held in our hearts. We shed the old and begin to emerge anew. Released from our limitations and negative beliefs, we become free to fly. Boom. Pretty powerful stuff. And I resonate so deeply with that because I had to go within and I had to close myself off and go and and literally let go of all of these things that were preventing me from becoming the butterfly, right? And this podcast, this moment, wow, I'm looking at the clock as we're speaking, and it's 3.33 p.m. Wow. That's what I'm saying, my friends. It's all divine. But I had to let go of things so I could be free to fly. And you're witnessing a result of that is this podcast right here in this moment at 3.33 p.m. That is so crazy, but I love it. That happens all the time. Honestly, these synchronicities, it happens all the time. Um, yeah, man, metamorphosis, you must let go of the old to embrace and create space for the new. And that goes with all kinds of things, jobs, relationships, habits, things that don't serve us anymore. Cause that's the thing, the, 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 the experiences we have and the relationships that we have in our lives, they help us grow into a certain point. And then there's a point where they don't help us grow anymore and we're just perpetually stagnant. So it's like we have to release those things to make space for new things to come in. New relationships, new friendships, new experiences, new jobs, um, new information, new knowledge. Um, but it's like you 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 have to let go to bring in the new, right? Um, it's all energy. This whole universe is energy. And one of the things that I did during COVID was I literally went to Goodwill probably like 50 times 
Um, and that's just like a guesstimation. It's probably more, honestly, to the point where like they know my name there. Shout out to my dude, Jesus, at uh, <clears throat> Goodwill. But the point of this Goodwill story is that I got rid of so much stuff. My own personal stuff, a lot of clothes, a lot of even artwork that I've made. I literally gave it away. I was like, I just, I, I need to make space for new things. Uh, things from around the house. I, and, and, and in that, I've noticed I freed up so much energy for new energy to come in. And um, if you're listening or watching, I implore you to try that out. If you have especially material things. Not so much, I mean, obviously jobs, habits, relationships, people that don't serve us, you have to let go of that. But even just the items in your house, notice if you have some things laying around, clothes, objects, furniture that you just like don't, it doesn't serve you anymore, let, like give it, a, give it away and like see how much energy that frees up in your life. It's, it's very subtle, but it's, it definitely holds some gravity. You know, man, you gotta let go of the caterpillar, become the butterfly. And that's the thing, the caterpillar this whole idea of like the unknown, right? Right off the bat, it's a scary idea, but the unknown is one of the most important places that we can go. And the unknown is a good thing because look, our egos, they don't believe that the unknown is a good thing. I had to burp, excuse me. Let me take a sip of water. A lot of talking. I'm not used to talking this much. It's been a while. Shout out to Liquid IVs. So good. Um, the unknown is good, and our ego doesn't believe it. Our ego wants to keep us safe. It wants to keep us comfortable. Your ego is like, no, 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 no. We like it here. We've mapped out the whole situation. It's comfortable here. Everything is known and predictable. We're safe here. Just stay here. That's a lie. That's a lie. Our ego, the ego's job is to keep us comfortable and safe. And of course, in some circumstances, an ego is a good thing. But for a lot of us, in a lot of situations, the ego holds us back and prevents us from growing and moving forward. Um, so the unknown, this whole idea of like, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's predictable. You know, Dr. Joe Dispenza says that people, most of us, not all of us, we become predictable in our lives. And how we do that is through the same behaviors. I'm going to butcher this. The same behaviors create the same emotions. Or the same, the same emotions create the same behaviors, which create the same results. So you are predictable in your life. Where if you embrace new, new thoughts and new emotions and new behaviors, you will then step into the unknown and you'll have you'll begin to have new experiences and those new experiences come from the unknown you know getting outside your comfort zone um, and as someone who has embraced that more and more in my life every day one of the easy ones that every I implore everybody to try is cold showers cold showers are not fun at first but and I'm listen I'm I'm no Wim Hof you know, I'm you know, 30 seconds, a minute at that. And that's all you need. But especially first thing in the day, because this idea of like um, facing adversity and like getting super uncomfortable, like first thing in the morning, it's like any any like other adversity that comes to me during the day, it like does not nearly hold as much weight or gravity. So getting uncomfortable and why that's so good for you and doing hard things and learning new things and creating like new neural networks in your in your brain. You know, that's what life's all about is like new experiences. And uh, I'm sure you've you've been there where you're in a rut. You know, it's the same thing every day over and over. Your life is predictable and you're just like, oh, like I'm in a rut. I got to get out of here where it's like you just got to step into the, to the unknown. And that's what change is all about. Um, the only thing that is permanent is impermanence. Thor, Avengers Endgame. Well, I'm sure somebody else said that, but he said it in that movie. And it's true. The only thing that is permanent is impermanence. Everything is constantly changing. That's nature. That's, that's, that's life. It's like everything is always shifting and changing and, and evolving. And if you go against that, well, then, like, you're dying. I have some quotes from Alan Watts I want to pull up. 
on my cool new uh, road or my stream deck. So let's see how we, okay. Oops, wrong tab. Still learning, folks. Okay, not this. We'll come back to the Pluto return, but quote from Alan Watts. He says, to resist change, to try to cling to life is therefore like holding your breath. If you persist, you'll kill yourself. Another quote, the only way to make sense out of change is to plunge into it, move with it, and join the dance. It's absolutely true. Um, embrace it. Embrace it. Embrace it. Especially now, the time on the planet. Um, it's all about change and destruction and rebirth. Um, right, Hot Chili Peppers, Californication. Destruction leads to a very rough road, but it also breeds creation, Right? Um, out with the old, in with the new. Let's pull up an article on the Pluto return. So, Pluto return. Now, if you're watching the video version of this, uh, oops, hold on. There we go. I'm on this website. All the, all the, like, the ads on, like, the side are just, like, super cringe, like, like, just political ad, like just don't don't pay no mind to these. They're just it's just silly. Like this is just a probably a not the best website, but it's also a good website just to learn about like what the Pluto return is and like why it's so significant right now in our lifetimes. And I I'm like, and I already know right now, people who are listening as as soon as I mention astrology, I'm gonna lose people, and that's fine. That's fine. Um, what we need to realize is that. Everything in this universe is interconnected. Everything is energy. Um, you know, good example. Uh, we're, what, 75% water? And the moon controls the tides on the planet? Well, does what do you think the moon is, is doing to us if we're that much water? Do you know what I mean? So the planets and the stars in the sky, I believe, uh, affect us. And the way that they move and their proximity to us. Um, I'm not super deep into astrology. Like, I'm sure people, astrology people out there are like screaming through their phones right now. But I'm just here to talk about this, uh, excuse me, this idea of like the Pluto return. So, okay. Let's read this article. And uh, if you're listening, you could just look up uh, Pluto returns to the United States in 2022. The last time that happened was July 4th, 1776. Hmm, that date sounds pretty familiar. That's the very day America was founded. The last time Pluto came back around. Now, uh, astrologically speaking, Pluto represents destruction and rebirth. And then it has a thread of basically... Um, cause again, like this stuff is definitely woo woo, like for sure, but it's also very interesting. Um, so just suspend your disbelief and just bear with me here and let's just chat about this. So last Tuesday, two, 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 literally a twos day, a once in a 248 year event happened. Pluto is going conjunct, which just means return to the United States. It comes back around. The last time this happened was on July 4th, 1776, the exact founding day of America. Astrologically, Pluto brings destruction and rebirth. Rome fell when Pluto returned. The first Pluto return, 219 AD, the Roman Empire's natal Pluto is at 27 Cancer. Now that's where I get lost here. Uh, it's just the position in the sky and what um, what constellation the pl Pluto was in. Um, let's go back to my camera. There we go. Okay. Hey. So the second Pluto return. So sorry here. Let's go back. The first Pluto return, 219 AD, the Roman Empire's NATO Pluto was at 27 Cancer. The Empire experienced a Pluto return during the years 218 and 220 AD. This was a period of terrible, of a terrible ending, ending after a great expansion of the Roman Empire. The second Pluto return, 464 AD, was during the reign of some puppet emperor, the Germanic general Reichmer, who managed the Western Empire. Uh, Donda 2 releases on that day, it says here. 
which may have a double meaning, Kanye even acknowledges the significance of the date in the relation to Pluto's return and its astrological implications on his Instagram post. 22 is the number of the master builder in occult practices. It is also interesting that the day is the 22nd day of the second month, 22nd year of the second millennia since Christ's birth. Now, it's just interesting, right? Because if you look back in history, every time Pluto's come around, some crazy shit's gone down on the planet. And last week was the Pluto return, and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, we're going to war. Um, so it's just interesting. It's just interesting. So this whole idea on the planet of, like, destruction for rebirth we have to destroy all of these systems that don't serve our human collective anymore so that we can make space and create new ones. And it's not easy. It's going to be probably pretty ugly, but the planet, the collective, it's like we signed up to experience everything we're going to experience in this lifetime and to assist with the great change that's happening on the planet. If you're super into the woo-woo, this idea of like the new earth and like fifth dimensional consciousness and really the, 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 the second coming of Christ is like really this idea of Christ consciousness and the people on the planet are going to embrace that state of mind, that state of consciousness. That's the real second coming of Christ is where we all kind of step into that state of consciousness that uh, Jesus that Jesus had. Um, so there's just a lot of change going on in our own lives and on the planet as a whole. Pluto has returned, and we'll see. We'll see what unfolds. You know, here we are. It's been a week. It's literally Tuesday. It's been it's been a week. We'll see what happens, man. Um, but I just wanted to talk to that if you're not familiar with what's going on in terms of, like, the astrological stuff and Pluto. And again, I'm no expert in astrology, but I just think it's very interesting that every time Pluto comes around, crazy shit goes down, whether it's the founding of America or Roman Empire's falling or a previous empire falling. It's just very interesting. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, but do not fear it. Embrace the change. It's all unfolding as it should. The, the light has already won, my friends. We just have to... Uh, because right now, you know, between the pandemic and now the whole Russia-Ukraine potential World War III scenario, it's unfortunate that the powers that be in the media that, con that, that controls the narratives, they want to keep us in a vibration of fear. And if we're in a vibration of fear, we, as a collective, are operating from a low vibration. And if you just flip it around and instead of like giving into the fear you 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 keep your vibrations high you focus on yourself you exercise you meditate you read you eat well you're around good people you stay positive and then as a collective our vibrations will be higher and the vibration of the planet will be higher you know everything is energy everything is vibration there's that famous ice crystal study where they put intentions of love in positive intentions into one thing of ice or water and then froze it. And then another thing of water with ne negative energy, negative intentions, hate, fear, and then they froze them. And both the, 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 the difference in the water crystals, the ones with the positive energy were beautiful and crystalline structures. And then the ones that were the opposite, negative intentions, negative energy was like all ugly and, you know, amorphous. They've done it with rice. They've done it with all different things. So, uh, what we focus on, where energy goes, energy flows. So just be mindful of what you're focusing on right now as there's a lot of fear that's being pushed into us. You know, the collective of humanity is being cast yet under another spell of fear. First it was the pandemic and now it's, you know, we're going to war. So, uh, and I've definitely felt that fear and I've definitely been down in those dumps, but just do your best to keep your vibrations high and stay positive and embrace the change that's coming because it's, you know, for the good of humanity and it's the, for the good of all of us. Um, change is good. Change is good. Um, well, that's like everything I wanted to talk about here in my notes. Um, 30 minutes in, it's a short, we'll keep it short, I guess, today. But it feels good to be back. I got to be honest. It, I really did miss this. And I'm um, really looking forward to recording more podcasts in the in the future. I'll definitely have some guests on from time to time, but I do enjoy this kind of one on one um, format where it's really just just me talking. Because God knows I love to talk. Um, 
So yeah, man, if you've been listening to the podcast since the beginning, I really do appreciate you and your time. And I'm sorry I was away for so long, but I really just had some stuff I needed to figure out. And uh, we're back, man. It took a while, but again, it's like you got to embrace that change no matter how long it takes. You got to go within and shut out the outside world. Um, Because at the end of the day, it's like nobody gives a shit. It's, It's really just you versus you. And if you're not feeling right about certain things, you got to listen to that and trust that intuition and then make the necessary choices and steps to create something different and create something new. And that's what I did. And here we are 10 months later and we're back, buddy. There we go. I got to, I got to learn. I got to, I still don't know these buttons. Applause, even though it's right in front of me. Okay. Anyway. (sighs) I think that's everything. Um, Go check out the new website, onwardsportal.com. Um, we got the new merch. We have all kinds of good stuff. What happened to my screen share? Okay. Well, we're just going to not do that. I'm clicking all these buttons. Sorry if it's confusing. Uh, new website is up. New merch, onwardsportal.com. Get you a t-shirt, a flag, a mug, a pillow, a sticker, a hoodie, a hat. We got all kinds of new cool stuff, uh, and I'm real excited about it. Um, all right, my friends. Uh, I love you guys, and I really appreciate your time. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Um, yeah, I, that's all I got for you today. Embrace the change. Stay positive. Keep your vibrations high. Go within. Focus on yourself, because uh, despite all the craziness going on in the world right now, Right here in the present moment. All is well. All is well. All right, my friends. Much love. Talk to you later.